Future Danny here to give you guys a little bit of a warning heads up. The only reason why this vlog is almost like 30 minutes long by the time I finish editing this is because of the night of writing dangerously and because I did read a snippet of my writing. I promise next week won't be as long. Thank you, promise. <laughs> Hello friends, it is Danny, and this is the day one of week two. That sounds really awkward. I'm going to call this day seven. As you can see, I am not currently at my house. I'm currently babysitting. I'm starting this vlog very late. I didn't film anything this morning, and it's almost four something, I think. I honestly can't tell you how much I have written yet because I don't know, but I have written some this morning. I think I am starting to hit not so much a slump, but a slowdown in my writing only because I'm starting to struggle with word choice when it comes to my novel because I am writing a new adult novel so it's like do I, hmm, do I write ass or do I write butt? What would my character say at age 24? I honestly haven't read a new adult in so long so I'm like do they say butt? Do they say ass? What do they say? Um, that's the word I've been struggling over lately. I, And this is like the the sexy bit that I didn't write the other night that's really not a sexy bit, but I'm trying to do the lead up to that and <laughs> I'm struggling with that word choice. So I'm sure once I write the actual sex sexy bits, um, I'm going to struggle with that as well. I do have the How to Write New Adult Fiction by Deb Havers Halverson with me, but that really doesn't tell me much about what word choice I should be using for these sexy bits. And I think I'm only struggling with this because this is my first time ever writing a new adult. So comment down below what words you guys think I should be using for that or something. I'm going to go keep the little girl that I'm babysitting company because she's currently sick so I feel really bad. So I think we're just gonna do some cuddle time on the couch. And then when she goes to bed, I will get some writing done. And hopefully by that time, I will know what word choices I'm supposed to be using because right now, I have no idea. Hi vlog. Hi. So I got one little sicky friend here. What's your name? Lauren. Lauren. And we're just currently watching Paw Patrol and chilling out. This one, there we go. Where are you going? Yeah, are you going to bed? Say good night. Yeah. Night. And now that means it is time for me to attempt to write. Wish me luck, cause I still don't know what I'm supposed to be writing for these words. <laughs> okay, so I have decided that while I am currently waiting for the oven to preheat to cook my dinner now, uh, I would take this opportunity to film this clip which I am going to read a snippet of what I've been writing because I didn't get to do that in the last vlog because I didn't have an opportunity where it was quiet and where I didn't have to be semi-quiet. Now I have this opportunity so don't mind the glare of my glasses. I am going to read to you chapter four of my story which is not necessarily a scene but more of like an inner monologue of my character which um, to preface is named Melani and Basically, if you didn't watch my nano survival kit where I talked about my story, this story is about a girl who gets invited to a lot of weddings and she attends them but she never has a date and so then she meets this guy at one of the weddings that she goes to and things happen with him. But this is before she meets this guy and um, you can tell that she's very bitter about weddings just from the very first line. Here we go, chapter four, I'm never getting married. It's not that I don't want to be married. Of course, I love the idea of a husband and a family. Three kids with his eyes and my cheeks and dreams as far as the stars. The ideas of my husband coming home after a day of work and kissing my cheek, complimenting a meal fit for a cooking show, a clean house and the kids washed up and reading their books on the couch. These are all ideas though. That is the fantasy of a married life. Real life is your husband not coming home until late, dinner left cold on the table, and your kids are screaming bloody murder because God forbid you tell them to bathe at least once every two days, like a normal human being. Real life is a divorce before the third year of married life is up, and you're ruining your kids' lives by splitting their time between you and your cheating husband. Or maybe it's you who has been unfaithful and guilty. Either way, the dog's life will never be the same after that. Or you could live like my parents, a father who never came home when his wife was nearly dying and seemed to resent her for the money she cost him. 
He still comes home with the smell of alcohol on his breath and red lipstick stained to his collar. They live unhappily ever after because he feels like he can't leave the woman he married just because she was sick, almost dead, and people would judge him for it. Especially not now, knowing that she'll live to see next year, the next 10 years even. He doesn't realize that people know he's still sleeping with his assistant, or that we all know the reason he doesn't come home until late is because he's a frequent flyer at the Fly on the Wall strip club. Or why my mother sits at home alone to a cold dinner and an empty nest because I couldn't bear to watch him do this to her anymore and she couldn't bear to leave, no matter how many times I begged. Here's the thing. I'm a very good judge of couples, whether or not they will be one of the lucky few that make it in this world. It's a talent I acquired from going to weddings, both from watching the brides and grooms, or even just watching their guests, the way they act and react. At every wedding, one couple will fight, another will make up, and some are like me, flying solo. The bride and the groom always look so in love, but it's when it comes to cutting the cake and what people love to call the cake smash, that is how I can tell how they really feel. The bride either gets mad that her makeup's been ruined, or the groom gets pissed off that his rented tux has got icing on it. The complete opposite to this is the two of them just laughing and not caring, just being happy that they're married and together, and that's how I know if a couple will last. If I'm being completely honest, I've witnessed far too many weddings go completely wrong that the idea of planning one of my own is a complete put off to me. Besides, a wedding is just a drunk fest labeled as celebrating two people, but realistically, it's an overpriced way to show off your love. If I were getting married, I would get eloped. It would just be my fiance and I and a minister on the coast of some remote island. I would buy a dress from one of the local merchants, something simple and handmade, and the price tag would be abysmal compared to the typical wedding dress price. Our witnesses would be locals, and we'd write our own vows with jokes only we'd understand. When our little ceremony ended, we would walk down the beach, my dress would be dipping in the water just the slightest before I picked it up, letting the wet sand squish between my toes. My husband would take my hand gently, kissing it. The sun would be setting on the horizon, and the birds would be sitting by the water's edge with hope that their dinner will come to He would sweep me off my feet, and the locals would stare on at us, talking about what a beautiful sight two people in love can be. But like I said, I'm never getting married, so this little thought will live only in the figment of my imagination where I know it will be safe. Happily ever after isn't always bullshit, only most of the time. That's chapter four. I am now on chapter nine. It's so weird writing from the perspective of somebody who goes to so many weddings and actually doesn't really enjoy them. I personally love going to weddings. I've only attended a few in the past few years, but like I love watching four weddings and say it's to the dress and everything bride related because I am a bride to be. I'm getting married in 2019. And so planning has just kind of been on the outskirts of my mind until now. So it's like, it's so weird writing from a perspective that isn't my own. And it's like, well, basically think of the opposite of what I feel towards weddings, which I love weddings. So it's like, put yourself in the shoes of somebody who hates weddings and what would she think? And apparently that's what she would think. She thinks that because she has gone to so many weddings and she's seen a failed marriage that actually hasn't ended yet, which is her parents. That's that. Um, let me know what you think. In case I just totaled it up, I wrote 1,051 words which puts me at 12,722. So, I have some work to do tomorrow. I've also been jamming out to the Trolls soundtrack all night, and I'm not sure how that's conductive to writing sexy bits, but that's what I've been listening to. So I'm not really sure why it's so bright out here this morning. I didn't realize there was a lady over there. I'm not really sure why it's so bright out this morning. Um, my only guess is that because we jumped an hour back, it still thinks that it's 7.30 out and that's why it's so bright. It's really pretty out today though. See? See, it's so pretty. I'm walking home very quickly. I didn't get any writing done at school today, which it's a bummer, but my iPad was dead, and that person is watching me vlog, that's funny. Okay, um, and I'm going to write in, so I'm going home and getting my stuff, and then I'm going, so I'll vlog at the write in. Okay, bye. My hope is to hit 15K at this write in so that I can be at tomorrow's school today. Because right now I'm at 12,000 something. We're filming. <laughs> and this is how short Danny is. <laughs> I just watched that clip from the write in, which is the only clip that I filmed, and I don't know why, but it just makes me really happy. Like, I don't know why it makes me happy because it just proves how short I am, but it's making me really happy. I haven't gotten any writing done since I got home. So it's almost 10 o'clock and I'm hoping to hit 15,000 by tonight. I have less than 2,000 words to write in two hours. I think I can do it. So this is my last update for day eight. 
It just clicked over to midnight. Donald Trump is president and I am 600 words away from day nine's word count goal. And that's all I have to say for tonight. And now we're back with your daily scheduled dose of NaNoWriMo nonsense from Danny. Oh my God, it's so cold out this morning. It's nice to know that the mornings are going to be lighter though. It's also not nice to know that they're gonna be freezing. I think I was at like 1,400 or 14,400 and something. So I'm fairly close to, or 300 and something. So that means I'm fairly close to 15,000, which is today's goal. And then hopefully I can write more than that to get to tomorrow's goal. I need to try and keep, catch up. What I want to be able to say is that I managed to stay a day ahead of schedule every day. It doesn't seem too hard because I was there at one point and then got behind and now I'm trying to catch up again. So I think I can do it. I have faith that I can do it. I just have to actually have the time and the motivation to do it because right now I'm kind of in a slumpy spot where I don't know what I want to happen yet. So I will update you guys on the way home from school or maybe at school. I'm not really sure yet. I think this is as good of an angle as I'm gonna get. It's very windy, so I'm hoping you can hear me. Um, I got like 400 words written at school and then my keyboard case broke. So I really didn't get much written today so far, but I'm hoping that now that I'm home or going home, I will be able to sit and write and get to 15K. That would be nice. You look so cozy. I just saw my first Christmas commercial on TV. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be happy that they're already getting ready for Christmas or if they're trying to distract from the fact of what happened last night. So who knew that writing about doing your laundry is able to help me break 16,000 because that's a thing that happened. I'm excited. I just hit 16,000 and 16 and that's where I'm gonna stop tonight because it's like four minutes until midnight and I really don't think I'm gonna end up finishing a chapter by then, so. Best stop while I'm ahead, which means that tomorrow, or today in about four minutes, I will only have to write 650 words to be on that word count, which means I will be ahead of the game once I hit that and then write more. And like I said earlier, because my keyboard case broke on my iPad and I'm not really sure if it's a usable thing still, I mean, the keyboard is still usable, but the top part that holds the iPad is um, not willing to come off. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to take that anywhere or use it because I'm afraid it'll scratch everything in my bag. So I might avoid that and just succumb to taking my computer to school. And um, just because I can, I'm gonna read you one sentence it is the opening line of chapter 13 which is the chapter i'm currently writing and that is like any single person living alone does i spend a lot of time in my underwear the way i see it if i have nowhere to be and no one to see why should i have to put on real pants life goals so last night was like a dead sprint dash to midnight and i was really surprised because I hit 16,000 words instead of 15,000 words yesterday. 16,016 to be exact. And I'm really excited because that means I only have 650 words to write today to get to the word count goal, which is 16,666. This decorations out already, really? Now here's something. If you watch my Nano Survival Kit, you know that I write across three devices, which is my phone and my iPad and my computer. And because of that, I have to find a way to basically send it across all three devices and usually I use Evernote because Scrivener doesn't do that. But I've realized that if I use iCloud on pages, I could put it anywhere. So that's what I've been doing when I'm traveling to and from school is I've used pages. This is what I see every morning and it's one of the only highlights of my morning ever. My word count in Scrivener is different from my word count in pages by 279 words and I don't know where they went. I think it's just because I haven't been updating the same word count every time. So I'll have to figure that out at some point. I have a new bus stop. It's less of a walk. Yay! Now I'm 
I'm in a car and I'm going to visit my cousin. Okay, so we just got done visiting my cousin and he went and surprised me and gave me this wedding planning book and it's really windy so I don't know if you can hear me. I'm going home to right now. Say hello. Hello. Hello from the other side. Stress of filming in front of him. <laughs> okay, so I didn't get a chance to vlog this when I went to the write-in, but I won one of the writing sprints because I wrote the most words. 387 words in 10 minutes. I was very proud. And I decided to forego the notebooks and get these super cute pens. They're very fine tipped, which is like dream pen goals right here. And I figured I could use them for when I'm editing my manuscript first draft after November. I'm curious to know if they smell. <laughs> so the word count goal for day 11 is 18,333 and after <sighs> succumbing to being tired after 10 full days of staying up until midnight every night and getting up at 6 o'clock every morning I'm giving up at 11.26pm <laughs> instead of going straight until midnight because 30 extra minutes of sleep is needed and I have 1,375 words to get to tomorrow's word count call. I'm being driven to my bus stop today. We get in the car, and this is playing. Christmas. Not yet. Um, it's Remembrance Day, and they're playing Christmas carols, and I don't think it's right. But, right. Right. Okay, bye. Okay, so I never vlog at school, but I'm gonna do it quickly and very quietly because there could be people by at any second I got myself some breakfast because I didn't eat and my bus broke down today so I was like 45 minutes late so I haven't got any writing done this morning I'm gonna go work on that now and eat my chocolate chip muffin so I just realized how long this vlog is going to be now I'm filming for the night of writing dangerously I'm just about to get to Fredella's and I'm excited and I'm here like three hours early to get early writing done so I'm gonna be the first one here I have set myself a goal that I can't eat that macaron until I hit like 500 words from now, okay, but which sad, which we makes me sad because I'm mid-sentence and nowhere near where I need to be. I need to hit a thousand. That's my goal. So this is <laughs> mine and Jillian's macaron, and, and these ones over here are Brittany's. <laughs> and why won't you put them in the middle? Because they're mine, and someone's gonna take them. Me. I have, I have a problem. I'm gonna just skirt around the issue here. It's me. I will take them. <laughs> she does not deny it. Write in music. You're putting this too to work your friends right here. So they can all be like, Why don't you people like you? This is probably the initiation. Welcome to the night of writing dangerously, folks. It's so dangerous. <laughs> Who's revealing? Who, who's starting so I can face them? We'll start uh, with Callie. 691. Oh, damn. I don't know how, but... 377. Uh, 537. Well, 650. Good. What about Jen? Then 124. <laughs> Mine was 650. 407. Okay, I don't die tonight. So, <laughs> I die tonight. You die tonight. I think it was Callie. Damn. Yeah, it was Callie. Her commitment to the game. This is our theme. The applause is real. Did you eat the vanilla one? Was it good? Yes. Was it vanilla? Yes. I feel like there's so much pressure on me to eat this cookie. It's literally just gonna be me eating a cookie. Like it's you I'm know not what? That you know what? You hit ten thousand. You deserve that cookie. <laughs> that was like four thousand. You get that cookie. Hours. Go girl. Eat that <laughs> <laughs> the sweet taste of victory. <laughs> so I am home and it is time. 2.17. 2.17. And we just got home and in bed. And Partner in Crime is here. Say hi, Partner in Crime. Hi. Technically, the write-in isn't over until 7. To all my bird peoples at Fredella's, you do you. You're doing great. Um, Hopefully you get more words written than I did because I didn't get very many done. But I had a lot of fun and I only came home early because I need some sleep because 
tomorrow I am going to try on wedding dresses for the first time, which is a big deal and I'm excited. So big thank you to Melissa who drove us home. I don't know how many words I got written. It wasn't a lot. And I don't know how many words I'm gonna get written tomorrow because I'm going to this wedding dress show thing. But we'll see. I'm just hoping to hit 20K so that way I can sing. I hit 20,000 words and I'm feeling awesome. But that's a premature thing to sing. Good night. I just got done trying on wedding dresses. It was so good. It was so much fun. I figured out the style that I like. Comment down below if you can guess it. Run, Forrest, run! I did not buy one because it's way too early, but I went there with the sole purpose of figuring out what kind of style I wanted, and I did, so that's good. Okay, Mama Darling, how did you feel about seeing your firstborn and only born well, in dresses? What I, ha guess? I had my moment of cry with the first dress, and then we were good, but still hasn't sunk in yet. She cried before we got in the door. Before we're gonna Look at the door. The car. Oh, yes. the car. Ooh. And in when we put the first dress on, I had a cry, but I'm good now. Yeah, wait until I actually buy the dress and find the dress and cry, like say yes to the dress. Yeah, probably. That'll be. How did you one. feel, Adam? You got to sit and watch. Um, I didn't. I didn't like the experience. I'm cold, and and so is he. Yo, Same. This he, was, we are living the Canadian life here, boys. I literally have a blanket to bring to my aunt's house because it's way too freaking cold. So it's now 10.23 at night and so far I have written 268 words today, which isn't a lot. I'm at 18,418, which means I'm about 1,500 words to 20k, which is today's word count goal. I'm hoping to hit it, but I don't know if I will. I'm basically just in my room because everybody's in bed because it's been a long day. Long day. So I am hoping to hit 20k in the next hour and a half. Is that all that is? An hour and 10 minutes? It's 10.25 and I need to catch up. I thought something that would be fun is to film my updating my nano calendar. And that brings us to today, which does not have a number yet. It's officially time. I can now sing it. I hate 20,000 words and I'm feeling awesome, thinking I should make Lady Marty career. Oh yeah, it happened. See that? See that? I'm at 20,006. I have officially hit 20,000 words. I'm about to go update my word count for tonight, which is going to stay at 20,006 because that is the end of chapter 16. And here's a fun fact that's not really a spoiler, kind of. Um, my character has just decided that she's going to become a wedding critic blog person. She's going to have an anonymous blog thing. It was originally an idea that I kind of bounced around and wasn't sure if I was going to use, and then I needed like a plot filler thing. So this is now the plot filler that is actually going to fuel some other conflict in the story. I am so exhausted. I'm just going to go save everything and call it a night and then I have all day tomorrow to write. If you are still watching this vlog, comment down below using the hashtag late night vlog squad because that's what we used last time. I promise that next week's vlog won't be as long as this because this is probably like 25 minutes long. I blame reading chapter 4 and the night of writing dangerously. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and leave your word counts down below because I'm interested to know how far you guys are along your nano journey. That is all for this vlog and I will see you guys next week.